Hey, neighbor. So I was at the Nationals game yesterday, baseball. I was at the Nationals baseball game yesterday against the Phillies, and Bryce Harper was traded from, or not traded, um, signed from the Nationals to the Phillies last year. And all of the Nationals fans were extremely butthurt about it. So they were making fun of Bryce Harper's kid, who's like less than a year old. So naturally, I did not stay there very long. Um, all of the people that I worked with are Nationals fans, and they were being a little bit too unruly, I guess. And, you know, I just, I, I'm just not interested. I don't want to hear you, like, cursing out a dude for leaving your team. Like, it happens. It's sports. Move on. Just because he's the only good player that you've had in 150 years or however long, 20 years, because the Nationals have only been around for, like, 20 years because they were the Expos back when we were kids. Why am I telling you this? So I want to get right into your question of the day, which was, how can WWE improve their main roster? And really, it's changing up some of the styles in that I shouldn't be able to tell you how a match is going to end just because I know the two people who are in the match. Like, if it's a big dude and a little dude, little dude's going to get off to a big start, uh, then the big dude's going to, like, hit one power move and it's going to end. Or the big dude's going to, like, clobber a little dude for, like, a minute, go for the pin, and get rolled up. Those are the two matches that WWE has right now. If I see one more, like, surprise roll-up, on WWE's main roster because they don't know how to book a storyline. I, I just, I don't want to watch it anymore. It's so boring. I, don't know, I hope, I hope AEW is just a much better product and I never have to feel bad about uh, not watching it uh, because I've been rooting for in any sort of competition to hit like the mainstream and cable networks here in the, the US. So I'm really excited. Uh, this week is going to be huge. I hope AEW gets like 10 million viewers, I know they're not going to. Um, but this is definitely a huge week for wrestling. Uh, yesterday we were watching the uh, Eagles game, me and my roommate, and uh, I was texting with my friends from home, and two of them are Eagles fans. So we saw a advertisement for SmackDown next Friday. It had Stone Cold in it, and they're like, Stone Cold gonna be wrestling again? And I'm like, Pump the brakes. He's not going to wrestle. He said he might do one match in the future if it's the right time and he feels up to it. But no, he's not going to wrestle. Oh man, if Stone Cold comes back, I might have to watch. And I'm like, that's not the reason to watch. Um, Penn State is about to play, so I am going to go hit the gym and get ready for the Penn State game and make some dinner. It's at 8 o'clock tonight. I know you're going to watch because you're such a huge Penn State fan. Um, we're on FS1. So my question of the day is, how is Link's Awakening, the remake for the Switch? I know you got it last weekend, um, but weren't able to play. So one, have you beaten it? Have you had time to beat it? Um, how is it? Is the remake better than the original? Same as the original? Is there any improvements or unimprovements? I don't know if that's what I'm looking for. But yeah, how is Link's Awakening for the Switch? Let me know. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. Make sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter at 90skyKev. You can follow Tom on Twitter at 90skyTom. You can follow both of us on Instagram at the 90s guys. Make sure to check back in every weekday for a new episode of the 90s vlog. And with that, I'll catch you on Monday, Tom.